morning. Dr. Habeck, thank you very much for your kind words and for your generous introduction. I know I've said this many times to you before, but allow me to repeat it once more. We very much value and appreciate your efforts. And I personally, truly respect how you're helping shape a new narrative for energy security and helping strike a balance between passion and realism. All of us in the energy industry who are genuinely interested in ensuring sustainable economic development truly value and appreciate your efforts. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it indeed gives me great pleasure to join you here this morning at the Berlin Energy Transition Dialogue. It also makes me be very happy to see many friends, many colleagues, and familiar faces that I have worked with and have come across over the past two decades. Allow me also to thank the organizers of this event. This event has truly and only grown in importance in this very critical decade for climate action. Allow me also to extend the warm wishes of the leadership of the United Arab Emirates to the government and people of Germany. For over 50 years, the UAE and Germany have enjoyed a close strategic relationship that cuts across many areas and many sectors like energy security, sustainable industrial development, and of course, jointly working together in addressing the threats of climate change. As home of the UNFCCC Secretariat and the host of three COPs, Germany plays an essential role in addressing the climate challenge. And as the UAE prepares to host COP28, we do so with a commitment to truly correcting course and enabling a meaningful, practical, pragmatic, transformational progress. Ladies and gentlemen, last week's IPCC report sent a clear message from science, which we have to respect. The world is losing the race to keep temperatures from rising 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. We have a small window of opportunity to make a massive course correction. There is still time, but we must act now, and we must act together. And we must anchor our response with a rapid, well-managed, and just energy transition. We must reduce emissions by 43% by 2030. That's only seven years. And we have to make these cuts while meeting the energy needs of a population that will grow by half a billion over the same period, seven years. Not every country starts from the same position, and not every country can seek the same solutions. We cannot adopt a one-size-fits-all approach. We need to explore every available option. It is not renewables or hydrogen or nuclear or carbon capture or only using the least carbon-intensive oil and gas. In fact, it is all of the above, plus new technologies yet to be invented, and once invented, commercialized, 
advanced, and then deployed. We must triple renewable energy capacity over the next seven years and expand it six times by 2040. That is to 50,000 terawatt hours. A very ambitious target. Renewable energy is transforming the power sector, providing almost 90% of all new generating capacity last year. We must capitalize on that progress, and we need to build on that growth. The UAE and Germany have a shared vision for the future of renewable energy. When the International Renewable Energy Agency, IRENA, was inaugurated in the UAE, IRENA's Innovation and Technology Center was established at the same time in Bonn. Both our countries have embedded wind and solar into our energy mix. In Germany, renewable energy has grown 40% of power generation in 30 years. In the UAE, we have built the three largest and lowest cost single site solar plants in the world. And through Masdar, the Abu Dhabi Future Energy Company, a company that I am very proud to be associated with its establishment. We will grow our renewable energy portfolio four times in the next seven years, from existing 25,000 megawatts of operational renewable power to over 100 gigawatts. And here, allow me to take advantage of this opportunity and extend an open invitation to our German partners and all our global partners to work with us to deliver commercial renewable energy projects in every region in the world. That said, renewable energy won't deliver all the zero carbon energy we need. There are more than 5,000 steel, cement, and aluminum manufacturing plants in the world today. And none of them can run on only wind or only solar alone. Along with heavy transportation, these hard to abate sectors make up over 30% of global emissions. This is where solutions like hydrogen come in an option we have been exploring proactively with our partners here in Germany. I was in Hamburg last October with His Excellency Dr. Habak to witness this country's very first hydrogen shipment, one that came proudly from the United Arab Emirates. And while hydrogen has great potential, the hydrogen value chain is still very much at its infancy. So we need to turn to other proven commercialized technologies like carbon capture. The IPCC has been saying since 2016 that carbon capture is an essential enabler for curbing emissions. Yet, there are still only 44 million tons per annum of operational carbon capture worldwide. I'm sure we all agree that is nowhere near enough. We need to multiply that amount 30 times. But we also know that the main barrier here is cost. We need smart, progressive government intervention through policies and regulation to attract and incentivize private sector investment. We need to explore emerging carbon capture technologies like direct air, mineralization, and osmosis. And allow me again to send an open invitation to engineering, technology, energy and industrial players from Germany and all over the world to partner with us and develop 
the carbon capture value chain of the future. We must find solutions to turn carbon capture from a cost we cannot afford into an opportunity we cannot afford to ignore. Carbon capture can become a true bridge in the energy transition. Ladies and gentlemen, carbon emissions are an industrial size problem that requires an industrial scale solution. You may, you may have heard my call to action earlier this month for the oil and gas industry, where I simply said that the oil and gas industry must up its game and align around net zero by 2050 or before and eliminate methane emissions by 2030. If we can do this in the United Arab Emirates, I am sure everyone can and should pursue the same. We need to reimagine the relationship between the energy sector and all other sectors. A relationship where the energy sector partners with heavy emitters, technology companies, and finance community, as well as the civil society, to find the breakthrough solutions we all desperately need. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, in delivering this transition, we need to ensure that no one is left behind. Last year, developing economies received only 20% of clean tech investment. These are economies that represent 70% of the world's population, that is over 5 billion people, and 800 million of them have no access to energy at all. They must have access to the least carbon-intensive energy options available today as we all stay focused on building the energy system of tomorrow. And of course, a critical success factor here is finance, capital, in fact, lots of capital. We need a holistic reform of the global international financial architecture and a holistic transformation of all multilateral de development banks. These institutions were established almost 80 years ago to solve post-war inequity and drive reconstruction. We need to modernize their mandate and update their operating models to cater for and adapt to the 21st century requirements. Concessional finance needs to be scaled up, made much more available, much more accessible, and much more affordable. And the reason why I keep emphasizing finance needs to be made available, accessible, and affordable simply to help lower risk and ensure the activation of private capital at a multiple. If we make the right moves today, we can create a low carbon pathway to a high growth destination. The energy transition represents the biggest leap in human and economic development since the first industrial revolution. But it will only happen in the time frame required if everyone does their part and pulls in the same direction. No one can be on the sidelines and no one can be left behind. Failure is just not an option. And imagine the benefits success can bring to all. A world 
that creates economic growth while eliminating and reducing emissions. A world where prosperity and sustainability go hand in hand, and a world where all people can look forward to enjoying the advantages of sustainable economic development. In short, a world where we hold back emissions, not progress. For the sake of this generation and all that follow, success is our responsibility. Success is our obligation. Let's make success our destiny. Thank you again for the opportunity.